Horror of Noon. I'd like to raise this topic for discussion once more. It's one of the only X-related topics I truly believe in slash engage with. The following is text from a post a few years ago, from a Russian Anon who brought the concept over from Vach. I would like to raise one topic, which for some reason I did not find on the English-speaking internet. Maybe I just didn't know how. We have a discussion about this feeling on Vatch, Russian-speaking image board, if anyone does not know, for three years now. We call it Fear of Noon. This feeling is very hard to explain. Perhaps one pasta from the book will help. There is a particular fear of the afternoon hours, when brightness, silence, and heat approach the limit, when Pan plays the pipe, when the day reaches its full intensity. On such a day, you walk through a meadow or through a rare forest without thinking about anything. Butterflies fly carefree, ants run across the path, and grasshoppers jump out from under your feet. Day stands at its highest point, warm and blissful, like in a bath. Flowers amaze you with their aroma, how wonderful, intense, and free they live. There is no one around, and the only sound that accompanies you is the sound of your own working heart. Suddenly, a premonition of irreparable misfortune covers you. Time is preparing to stop. The day is filled with lead for you, catalepsy of the time. The world stands before you, like a muscled cramp in a cramp, like a pupil dumbfounded by tension. Oh my god, what a desolate stillness. What a dead bloom all around. The bird flies in the sky, and with horror, you notice. Its flight is motionless. The dragonfly grabs the midge and gnaws off her hat and both of them, and the dragonfly and Midge, are completely motionless. How did you not notice that nothing is happening in the world and cannot happen? It has been like this before, and will be forever and ever. And not even now, not before, nor forever and ever. Just not to guess about yourself, that you are the same. Then it's over. There will be no return. Is there really no salvation from the bewitched world? The ossified pupil will swallow you too. With horror, you are waiting for the release of the explosion, and the explosion breaks out. Explosion breaks out? Yes. Someone is calling you by your name. Google has this. However, the ancient Greeks also knew this feeling. They call it a meeting with Pan, a panicky horror. This is the fear of noon. You are in stagnant water. This is solid water that closes over your head like a stone. This happens when there is no separation, no change, no life. For example, a sunny day, where light, smell, warmth, at the limit, stand like thick rays, like horns. A cohesive world without gaps, without pores. There is no different quality in it. And, therefore, time, individuality, cannot exist. Because if everything is the same, immeasurable, then there are no differences. Nothing exists. But who at the last moment called you by your name. Of course, you yourself. In mortal fear, you remembered the last divider, yourself, with both hands grabbed your soul. Be proud, you were present at the opposite rotation. Before your eyes, the world was turning into what it arose from, into its original one material foundation. At that moment, you met not only with Pan, but also with your own soul. What a weak voice she has, weak but rather pleasant. Fear of lack of individuality also explains hostility to open, continuous spaces. Monotonous water or snow deserts, large bare mountains, steps without flowers, blue or white sky, landscape too saturated within the sun. The majestic is always stern and uncomfortable. Oh, the particular longing of the southern countries, when nature is excessively strong and life is surprisingly shameless so that a person is lost in it and is ready to cry from despair. Tropical longing finds its expression in the hysteria inherent in the southern people, in fits of dance or jerking, when a person runs without stopping with a knife in his hand. He wants to cut open, to tear apart the continuity of the world, runs, killing everything in his way, while he, they won't kill him, a bloody thumb will not pour out of his mouth. Snow melancholy is known to winterers of polar stations, it also causes convulsive dances and a special maneric disease in which a person, unable to stand the eternal night, leaves the parking lot directly in the darkness, in the snow, to death, 
Leonid Lubovsky, Faces of Fear. Description of this feeling by Anon. If you know the feeling of the upcoming disaster on a hot summer day, if you are alarmed by the rustle of trees and the silence of a sultry noon, if you see something sinister in the scorched colors of summer stuffiness, welcome. Here is an example of this feeling. Imagine a nice summer day. Around it is bright and sunny. The trees are slightly noisy from the wind. There are no other sounds at all. Suddenly, everything fades before your eyes and a thin, growing noise appears, which grows slowly, slowly, so slowly that it drives you crazy. I think in this case, this feeling is connected with the fear of the end of the world, in particular, the nuclear apocalypse. Or there is a feeling that something strange is happening now. For example, that the cause of your death will come to you. You are now obsessed with dread that now you have to die because of some stupid accident. For example, a tree will fall on you under which you were sitting, or a cat passing by will be infected with rabies and bite you, or that guy in a white t-shirt and grey jeans will stab you with a knife for no reason at all. You are doomed, but you do not know why. You don't see a cause of disaster. Everything seems okay. Most often, a feeling arises when you are alone, but not necessarily, and it's not an agoraphobia. We discussed that already. We don't feel it constantly when we walk on the empty streets or stand in the field. This happens occasionally. Most common triggers. Dense blue to black cloudless sky under the scorching sun. White, sand, or terracotta buildings in the middle of an empty space. Simple, clear, strict forms, a cube, box, ball, pyramid. Some palaces with stucco do not trigger like that. High contrast, bright light and black shadows. There should be no people, but some lonely figure can enhance this feeling. Copy paste of objects, for example, identical buildings in a row. The presence of any dark pits, openings, holes, enhances this feeling. Common landscapes that many people have dreamed or in which they have experienced this feeling IRL. An endless field flooded with sunlight, especially before a thunderstorm. A field with power lines. A lonely building in the middle of the field, for some reason usually white. We do not know why though. Dreamed of very many experiencing this feeling. The feeling that there is some kind of evil in the house, or that a bad accident will happen here, or already had happened. Clay huts, old temples, statues, or simply stones of strange shapes in the middle of a desert or plateau. Soviet buildings, such as palaces, department stores, etc. With all these columns, cubes, stone plateaus, and other manifestations of megalomania, often mixed with an acute sense of nostalgia for something lost. Probably, that's fair only to us, because, well, we live here a lot. Sunlight deserted yards of panels. Lonely figures of people in the midst of such landscapes, looking off into the distance, or running away from something that we don't see. Anti-triggers. Water, the sea, pools, rivers, lakes practically negate the effect with minimal exceptions. In some cases, greens, trees, bushes, flowers, etc. But sometimes it enhances the effect. Depends. People, animals, a life, clouds, many colors, liveliness of the picture, design, composition. In general, a classic landscape. Here are some stories from some anons that describe their experiences. Yes, I have something on the subject. Not like in daylight, and it wasn't that scary, but this is one of the most disturbing, painful, depressing atmospheres. Not far from the place where I live, a new apartment area was built. Typical nine-floor buildings, fresh painted, with courtyards, lighting, ready for people to move in. So one warm spring or summer day, we somehow went there with a couple of friends. It was evening. The sky had already darkened considerably, turned gray. The air became warm, heavy. We decided to shorten our path through one of these courtyards, and now we are walking along the porches. Freshly painted walls, benches and fences. Street lamps brightly illuminate everything around us with their yellowish light. Around silence, and against the background, you can hear the city noise. So distant, merging almost into a quiet hum. It was here, in the bright light of the lanterns, under the grey sky. I felt uneasy. I don't know. In this whole situation, there was something unnatural. Something unhealthy in the bright colors, 
and the complete absence of people in this environment, which usually should be a lot of people on the contrary. Do you understand me? I touched this atmosphere in the game Quiet Fear, when monsters suddenly popped up on an empty evening street. But the situation was not the same. The streets were not alike. My road to the postal building runs through residential buildings with a kindergarten, and they form corridors. Their cherry trees grow under the windows. I constantly eat cherries along the way. So, just go there. All the sounds immediately become much quieter. Very few people pass by and almost never hear anything from the windows. No TV, no conversations, no barking dogs, nothing. And when it's noon, this place is flooded with an avalanche of light and all the shadows are so dark, almost black. The windows of the apartment house go directly to the kindergarten, from the fence to the windows, five to six meters. It is very convenient for any pervert from this house to watch the children. There is a feeling that people can disappear here. In general, it is very uncomfortable to be there. About 11 to 12 years ago, I rode a bicycle from my summer house to hell knows where. It was hot, just like now in Moscow. I already drove onto the highway. I traveled along the railroad tracks. Lonely houses went into the distance. Why did people leave this village? Someone told stories about some kind of radiation, electricity, but this is nothing more than rumors. After I did pass the road and ended up on the highway, I saw a power line. It was downstairs, almost beneath me, but it seemed so far away. All these electric towers, a metal mesh netting, looked rather creepy against the backdrop of a clean, hot day. But next, next I got a lump in my throat. I was even sickened by the experienced horror. In the very far away, I saw a hangar of some fantastic size. I left very fast from there, never came back again. So this fear is in our genes, huh? If the phenomenon is even known to the ancient Greeks? I often had a dream earlier that I was walking on a sunny summer day through a meadow. In the sky there were some beautiful clouds, but something was off. I climbed the slope of a steep hill, and from it, some kind of metal or concrete structure is visible in the distance. It seems to me that I will reach it, and there it is cool and you can hide from the sun, but I can't get there. I'm walking and walking, but the building is not getting closer, and I begin to feel a panic attack. Scary. We rarely have clear days in our city in winter. Maybe that's why. Although not quite winter, but early spring. All around in melted black and gray snow. Bare trees. The crumbling courtyards of a small town. Not a soul in the streets. And here peeps bright as welding. The disturbing sun and floods all this idyllic landscape. I remember this with a friend in childhood, we felt. We walked along the street, went around several blocks, did not see a single car and not a single person. Panic escalated. It seemed that even talking was becoming difficult, as if the sound was spreading as hard as in water. It seemed that we were about to disappear. I am five years old. Heat. Country house. Only potatoes are growing. In the corner stands a stone house, which was built by grandfather. From one end of the cottage to the other 50 meters, behind the flimsy grid, the cottage of neighbors and a scarecrow forever following me. Crossing the road alone is unrealistic. With adults, it is scary. In my opinion, the main difference is that at night, you are afraid for yourself. That is, now some sort of maniac or creature will come out and kill you. The danger is more or less specific. It comes from the darkness and is directed at you. Midday fear is something else. He is much stronger. There are no apparent reasons for him, and you are not afraid for your existence, but for the existence of the world in general. I don't know when I feel this. It seems to me that the fate of the universe itself will be decided now. It will either irreversibly change or disappear, will be erased. In short, let it sound pathetic, law, but in general, this is fear for the universe itself. I would say so. The fear that the familiar form of the world will end. I noticed in the thread before that a frequent element of such fear is some massive object in the middle of something boundless. Here is this post with a hangar in an abandoned village. Fear of power lines. Dreams about lonely houses 
in the middle of the field. When I was a small kid, in the summer we went to the cottage. There have always been moments when I was very uneasy, given that there is generally a quite deserted small village and almost sunny in the warm season. This adds atmosphere. There was always time, usually afternoon, 2 to 3 o'clock, when the sun was still high, the heat was heavy, everyone had lunch, and, like sleepy flies, spread to their corners. Almost all of my neighbors had the same time for this, so getting someone out to play was impossible. I usually sat in the attic, or climbed out into the garden on a swing, took with me a stack of Soviet magazines, such as Science and Life, and read, and at that time, there was always a feeling of some thick and viscous time, which seemed to stop, and at once, the trees and all kinds of insects seemed not real, but some kind of decorations, and there was a feeling that nothing will never happen, that there are no more your friends, parents, or neighbors, even the dog has disappeared somewhere. I always waited for the heat to go, and activity would begin again. Mother and grandmother would get out into the garden to dig in their vegetables. Dad would go out for beer. Friends would get out for a walk and swim. All this movement started in the late afternoon, when in some book about the Soviet children camp, I read the phrase, dead time, in relation to afternoon sleep. And since then, this image has not come out of my head. Such an endless summer. What is the horror of noon, some people ask here. Bright sunny day, you are walking around the city, green trees, trams ring, the bright bright sun and almost no people, and not even a lot of cars, and suddenly, all the sounds around seem to die, an almost ringing silence. You look around, and understand that this should not be, and it can't, and the feeling of something terrible is coming. You feel like Sarah Connor in the playground a second before a nuclear explosion, and then suddenly, all the sounds come back and this feeling goes away. I remember one of those days. Too bright, poisonous sun. All home, and suddenly this feeling. Silence. Unnatural silence. Further events unfold in seconds. Suddenly, a motorcycle enters the courtyard. Some kind of drunk aunt throws a bag in the face of the driver. He loses control, and, together with the passenger, crashes into the wall at high speed. Howl. Screams. It is on such a sunny day that the screams are especially audible, as if everything around is the scenery for this drama. I'm a little boy. I went to the other end of the city to buy some kind of trinket. Sunny day. What an unnatural summer day. Too much sun. Unnatural silence in the air. I'm running back home, and suddenly I see how it seems to me a familiar house and shop, and I think maybe I somehow cut the road. Although I seem to understand with my mind that I could not be near this house without speed and transport, but it turned out that I was. I rush to this house. There is dead silence, the sun, and I wander into the yards and understand that this is not the house that I thought it was. Then I run further in that direction. For some reason, it seems to me that this is how I will cut the path. I find myself on some sort of railroad. I run on rails. A worker sits there, and he just silently looks at me, and says nothing, and does not even blink, as if he is frozen. I run past. The sun is blinding. I see an old poster, glory to some congress of the CPSU Central Committee, and suddenly I feel horror. I stop, and at that moment, in the silence, I hear a scream. Boy, stop. Running workers in orange robes. The wire came off. If I ran further, I would be fucked. That's why I feel the horror of the day. The geometry, ideal to lifelessness. The eyes burning white in the deep hot blue sky. A hellish combination. The fear of noon is an uncanny valley, just in relation to all reality. In limp horror, Everything is silent, languid, quieted down before the powerful Moloch. If only a painful hour has passed. You run, and someone is chasing. If you want to shout, you do not dare. Yes, and you are not alone. The whole creature has gone inside itself. The whole creature, frozen, is waiting. It seems that the noon demon is not gentle to the midnight demon. 
This is not my mysticism. I'm afraid of it. No soul will be revealed at night or day, and I would not want to die in these terrible hours. Was waiting, a pile of sand scattered soundlessly, and lay down at my feet. Confused, I turned around. Mother was not visible in the window, but I did not dare to jump up and run to her. The silence continued. Only the small waves of the bay evenly ran and ran. They ran and ran away, ringing a little audibly, leaving a wet footprint in the sand. It was completely calm. The calm was inside me. I held my breath, only smoothly. My heart was beating hard. How long it lasted, I could not say. Now I know well what silence is. She comes at the turn of a sultry summer day, at noon, burnt by heat. The birds become silent. Predators, soaring from dawn in the sky, on their spread wings, hide in the shade. The fish stops playing in the mirror of rivers and ponds. It goes deeper into the dark underwater thickets, and even water lilies hide their yellow and white cups underwater. Heat, calmlessness, the sun stands steeply, and the hotter the day, the more surprising this calm occurs in nature. You can feel it only in the forest, in the field, on the sea. In the city, it is imperceptible. There is an abject feeling that comes with the stillness of midday. I felt it all the time as a kid, to the point where I actually disliked the summertime as a young child. Part of that is that I grew up on a prairie, Wyoming High Plain to be exact. I've heard the climate is very similar to much of Russia, incidentally. I don't really want to wax poetic about the uncanniness that's felt because it's very complex and probably multifaceted. One thing I'll say is that it's hard to feel inside a town and almost impossible to feel inside a city, in my experience, unless you find yourself on the dusty, quiet ends of towns where you find junkyards and storage complexes. The conditions are perfect when the crunch of gravel under your feet cuts like a knife through the still air with only the chorus of grasshoppers to greet it getting a little waxy, I know. As a child, I had the same dream many times in a row. The essence of the dream, I ended up in the near future, in my small poor town. Went to my apartment, but strangers opened to me there and say that my relatives had been long dead. After that, I wander around and think what I should do next. Atmosphere, noon, a naturally bright sun, many flowers around and old houses painted in white. No people around, complete hopelessness, I remember this atmosphere forever. I was in Britain, in the small town of Bournemouth. Once in the afternoon, I walked along winding streets, each with rows of houses and small courtyards, with fences, stone walls, hedges. The weather is hot. There's not a soul around at all. Nobody goes on the roads. Only bees and bumblebees rush between the flower beds, and then a melody starts to play from somewhere like a van with an ice cream from a movie, and it drilled the brain that you know it, but you can't remember where it came from. It was creepy, but too much. I went to the sound, but in general, it was difficult to understand where it came from, as if this fucking ice cream man walks around you in circles. I walked for about 20 minutes. The music subsided, then returned, but even when I spat and returned home, I could hear it. As a result, it somehow quietly stopped. When the owners returned, I lived with an elderly couple. I asked them about ice cream vans and music, but they did not know anything. Then all evening on the internet, I was looking for a melody, but I did not find the one. In general, in that town, if you get away from the coast, where there are shops and a crowd of students slash beach people, there was always such a deserted atmosphere. So you expect to see Dumbledore in a pointed hat, and he will steal the battery charge from the phone, and none of the neighbors behind the hedges will not know. Does anyone even live in these houses? Imagine such a picture. Clear sky, sparkling snow, bright sun, and just a deafening creak of a lighter in absolute silence. Of course, holidays. Everyone went wherever, but even the birds would not tweet. And if you take into account that my outskirts are almost under the window, then the prolonged silence of more than 10 seconds was something abnormal. No human voices, no wind noise quiet as in a coffin, and, together with this silence, the radiance of fresh snow under the winter sun, in contrast with the blue sky, seems somehow unnatural, as if ridiculously bright scenery instead of the real world. Were it all at night, it would not be half so scary, because such quietness is natural for the night, and then I vividly imagined 
that not only the surroundings had turned into decoration, but all the people in their apartments are now frozen in dynamic poses. And for some reason, I did not freeze, and thereby made a terrible mistake. Because they're about to begin in the silence. There are deaf steps of something huge in the distance. Then a figure as tall as a couple of skyscrapers will begin to emerge from the blueness of this thick sky, and the steps will slowly and gradually begin to grow louder, louder, and in this silence, everything will be heard perfectly. Well then, someone did slam the car door under my balcony, and the illusion collapsed. I quite easily threw all these unpleasant sensations out of my head. I'm not afraid to go out, and on such days, I don't pull the curtains, but every time, on winter sunny days, I sometimes feel something like that, and at such moments, I quickly translate thoughts into something abstract, so that those feelings would not be repeated. Sometimes I scroll this memory at night, it's not so scary. I used to have a recurring dream, it was bright and cloudless, sky blue, no sun in sight, nothing else in view other than an evenly cone-shaped mountain with a spherical boulder balancing on top. Throughout these dreams, I could only imagine the boulder either balancing precariously on the peak of the mountain or falling to either the right or left of my point of view. Whenever the boulder would get low enough and start to reach my peripheral vision but not completely disappear, the boulder would reset. I just remember the dream being really bright and a feeling that beyond what was in front of me there was no sane universe. That was all there was left. I always awoke from this dream, very unsure of the real world. I felt like it was questioning my own perception of reality. In fact, all this should express, or be an attempt to this expression, the efforts made to achieve the goal, the stop of the internal dialogue, and actually the day horror itself is this very tool for achieving the result. Just not just stopping, but something like cementing, freezing, blocking, crystallizing thoughts inside the brain, inside character, inside spirit, cementing, but not in cement, but in viscous resin, freezing, but not on ice, but in durable, non-cracking amber, crystallization, but not atomic structural, but semi-fantastic, transmutation energetic, transforming a stopped, frozen thought into a crystalline shell, transforming this thought into a radiation of pure awareness slash understanding. Here I looked at your creep pictures and caught the same feeling that I once experienced while driving in the summer on my great northern towns and riding up to a career with huge blocks of square stones. It would seem that nothing special, the forest, shit, pines, stones, friends nearby, just a moment ago they joked with each other, they did not think about anything gloomy. And then I looked at these huge, geometrically smooth rocks at an empty blue sky above my head without any hint of a horizon, climbed high at the shabby small pine trees, flat grey ground under my feet, and here it happened. The place was terribly familiar. Either in the horror films, the subconscious has outlined these simple forms, or the tourist folder has taken to similar scary places, or seen enough of such landscapes in films about Siberian camps, or all this together and at once. There was a feeling of not even approaching death, but rather a smoldering feeling that I had already died and failed in the textures of this world and I would never find an exit into the real world again. In short, we got out of there, a positive attitude weathered out of me for at least a week and I still remember those places sometimes. If you think logically, then our eyes are more accustomed to wild, disordered, and rich in detail landscapes of nature, while the brain, on the contrary, is inclined to streamline and simplify everything. All these simple, even geometric pictures, the most intense in color, can really cause some kind of frightening, familiar feeling. Too familiar. Straight from the fantasies of our own sick mind. At noon, exactly noon, it is even worse. You look around the horizon, dry vapors of arable lands, stand in the frozen air. The land is burning, the peasants say. The sultry breath of the earth does not sway. The merciless, luminary nails, each leaf to the cracked, dehydrated soil, crushes with streams of heavy light. Then the firmament pours a shower of molten gold. Even the dust is not dusty. It oppresses her. Humble. 100% oppression. Heavy and creepy, in weak-willed horror. Everything is silent, languid, quiet. 
Have you ever experienced that on a sunny summer day, you are suddenly seized with an unreasonable anxiety? For example, in nature, when everything around should be pacified, for some reason, gnaws at the thought that something strange and even scary is happening, or painfully familiar streets of your hometown suddenly seem alien to you, as if you were in a parallel reality. If so, then you are faced with a phenomenon called midday horror. This effect is used with pleasure by artists and filmmakers to evoke anxiety or even animal fear in the viewer. If you've watched the recent Solstice 2019 movie, then you probably know what I mean. The noon idea was probably inspired by the dead silence in the fields on a hot afternoon, especially before a storm, when tiny eddies of wind kick up dust and disappear immediately as the air swells over the grain and the whitish sky rumbles with warmth. The loneliness of a person in this situation is manifested in personification. I was 13 years old. I was vacationing at the Dhaka with my grandparents. At about noon, I went for a walk in the clearing between our house and the forest. At first, everything was as usual. Birds sang, leaves rustled, in general, the usual sounds of the wild. But at some point, everything seemed to freeze. The wind disappeared. There was silence and some kind of immobility. Remember how in Charmed, one of the sisters stopped time. So, there was a feeling that someone waved his hand in the same way, and the world stopped. Or as if I got into a parallel reality, where everything seems to be the same as in our world, but only at first glance. A sort of Coraline in the Land of Nightmares, only at noon. I was saved from the impending panic by a neighbor's puppy, who went out into the clearing with a bark and dispelled this haze. When I told my grandmother about this, she, who grew up in the village, replied that at noon, you can't leave the house, and especially work. You can meet noon. Her grandmother described her as a tall girl who could kill for breaking the ban. In fact, this spirit is the personification of noon as the borderline time of day that is dangerous for humans. And this mythological character has a completely rational explanation. The sun at its zenith can cause serious health problems. Noon is a symbolic border, between the morning and evening halves of the day. Like midnight, it was considered a sacred time of day when a wide variety of mythical creatures, usually quite dangerous, are activated. The word noon in southern Siberia and the White Sea meant to live the last minutes before death as soon as the soul in the body gets noon. Remember the expression panicor? Initially, this expression meant midday fear because According to the beliefs of the ancient Greeks, the hour when the sun is at its zenith is the time when the god Pan rests, and on the one who dares to disturb his sleep, he sent the same panic horror. Perhaps the most vivid reflection of the midday horror found in painting. Surely each of you has come across pictures in which there seems to be nothing frightening, but when you look at them, you feel discomfort. For example, Christina's world by Andrew Wyeth, which at first glance depicts a girl just resting in a field. However, her unnatural, kinked posture and thinness gives us a wake-up call. Another artistic technique is to depict deserted places that should be full of people, embankments, beaches, streets of large cities. This creates the feeling of a disaster that has occurred. By the way, it is not uncommon for a person to be caught in midday horror in the city. When the streets are empty, due to the fact that most people are at their workplaces. Have you ever had this, a bright, cloudless day, outside the city, exactly noon? Nature has quieted down, it would seem, a very grace, but you experience irrational anxiety, perhaps even horror. You are haunted by the feeling that something terrible is about to happen, or has already happened. The world looks frozen, ominous, even more ominous than at midnight, but soon the sun leaves its zenith and lets you go, perhaps until next time. In fact, this is a very common, albeit almost unexplored phenomenon. It even has a well-established name, Midday Horror. I was about 10 years old, together with my cousins and my relatives from the village. We worked in the haymaking. There was a lot of work, but it was pleasant in its own way. A field surrounded by a copse, the silence, the heat is such that there are no mosquitoes, or even horseflies. You turn it over with a rake, or collect hay, calm, meditative work. The dogs who came with us are running around, 
the adults chatting briskly about something in Maori. I don't understand anything, but their cooing also has a pacifying effect. I still remember these days with pleasure. Then noon comes, and the adults, having drunk hot tea and blown away by the heat, go to bed, rot in the grass. Their bodies, stretched out in strange positions, look phantasmagoric and look like corpses. My brother and I realize that we are left alone in a sun-scorched clearing in the middle of the forest. Suddenly, there is an eerie silence. The birds are silent, no flies are heard, even the wind dies down. The trees are absolutely motionless. Dogs huddled under the hay begin to whine. Time turns off. It seems that the same empty monument lasts and lasts forever. The sun feels ruthless and hateful. The sight of the oppressive sky starts to feel sick. Even the blades of grass don't move. Suddenly, we get scared. I don't know if Russian villages are now talking about midday women. Terrible women who drive crazy those who went out in the fields at noon. But the Maori are definitely lovers of stories about the evil Kermet and similar spirits. You can't walk around the field at lunchtime. Kermet will come and pick it up, my grandmother told me. He will pull his hand out from under the ground and drag it straight to the dead. It's funny that in Chinese mythology, there is a similar character, only reduced. This is the hand of Wang, that is, the underground king. She also pulls underground and strangles those who did not follow the rules and rituals. The midday moment stretches, stretches. At some point, the brother begins to whine. He says that some black guy is looking at us from the forest. I don't see anything like that. Thanks for that too. I don't want to wake up adults. You can imagine how you start shaking them, but they do not get up, and they never get up. Despite the anxiety, we ourselves are terribly sleepy, but we do not sleep. It seems that if you fall asleep now, you will never wake up. This moment passes as unexpectedly as it began. Suddenly sounds of movement appear, and with it time. The dogs run out of their hiding places and start running around us. Grandfather wakes up and grumbles that it's time to work. The world no longer seems sinister. We start laughing and return to work, but the midday horror returned a couple more times, and each time it was creepy, like the first. Hello friends, I hope you are well. I promise I'm not putting on a, a deeper voice to try and um, invoke the spooks. I just, um, I drank last night and so my voice sounds like this. I hope it's not too much of a bother. And if it is, mm, go fuck yourself. No, I'm kidding. I love you very much, very much so. Mm, uh, never mind. Okay, bye now.